Two months ago, a group of researchers led by Nobel Prize winners Edward and May Britt Moser published a paper which absolutely blew my mind. This study, published in the prestigious journal Nature, is a wonderful example of where abstract mathematics meets neuroscience. If you haven't yet seen my neural manifolds video, consider watching it first, because over there I explain some concepts in a bit more detail and provide background information. In this video, we will see how your brain uses a torus to navigate itself through a physical space, and what it might mean for the way neural systems process the information. If you're interested, buckle up! Thank you Shortform for sponsoring this video. In our rapidly moving world, it can be tough to keep up with all the new literature being published and drown in the sea of information. Shortform is an amazing platform which solves this problem by providing book guides or book summaries on steroids. They contain a super detailed outline of key ideas, complemented by references to other relevant information sources and insightful notes written by the author of the guide. This really comes in handy for finding relevant books in the first place and serves as a great companion when you want to read the book itself by providing anchor points and new perspective. I personally use short form almost every day now, as I'm getting back into the habit of regular reading. If you want to join me, you can use the link down in the description to get 5 days of unlimited access and 20% discount on annual subscription. My name is Atom, I'm a computational neuroscience student and researcher. Here we talk about the brain, both the theory of how it works under the hood, as well as practice of how to study and learn more effectively. If you're interested, consider subscribing to the channel not to miss anything. Before we begin, I'd like to say that this video is a bit different from the ones I usually do. I'm still experimenting with video formats, and I thought of making them more centered around particular new papers that come out, rather than trying to cover a generic topic as well as maybe dialing down on the quality of animations and effects a little bit in favor of upload frequency and consistency. But obviously I will still provide all the necessary background information and try to make it look engaging and visually pleasing, so don't worry. Anyways, any feedback is much appreciated. The study we are talking about today deals with grid cells. It's a group of neurons found in the interrhinal cortex, a structure which sends its connections to the hippocampus, and together they form a system for spatial navigation. I already made a video on hippocampus, place cells and how they map animals' position in space, so you might want to check it out right here, or down in the description. Grid cells are a bit different. They provide a coordinate system for the brain. You might recall from high school, there are Cartesian coordinates and polar coordinates to a specified position using either x and y variables or r and theta variables, respectively. Well, it turns out that the brain uses a different approach. The environment is styled with hexagonal grids of different scale and orientation. Each single grid cell is firing extensively when the animal is at any of the vertices of this grid. And these patches of ground, where a neuron is the most active, are called the firing fields of that cell. Grid cells that are physically located close to each other in the brain usually have the same orientation and the same scale of this grid. It's just that their firing fields are shifted with respect to one another. In this case, they are said to belong to the same module. Cells that are more distant and have the different scale and orientation thus belong to a different module. And this modular organization allows the brain to uniquely decode the animal's position in space by converging the signals from different modules. Because the activity of a single grid cell provides ambiguous information about position. Active firing of this neuron can either mean that the animal is here, here or basically anywhere on the vertices of the grid. However, mm -hmm. if we are also receiving the signals from cells of a different module, we can superimpose the firing fields and pinpoint the exact location. Supposedly, this mechanism is used further down the line in the hippocampus to translate the activity of grid cells into place cell activity to encode the exact location within the environment. But let's return back to the paper. What's so interesting about grid cells is the collective behavior of all of the cells in the same module. To characterize the activity of the entire network, we can use the data of unit activity 
and that is the exact timestamps when each neuron spikes. Smoothing the data allows us to get instantaneous firing rates. For n neurons, that would be n numbers, corresponding to a point in n-dimensional space. Acquiring a large sample of such points and then applying dimensionality reduction algorithms, which basically find the optimal way to project this high-dimensional point cloud to our conventional three-dimensional space, would give us this. Yep, there is a torus hidden in the activity of grid cell network. As the animal moves in the environment, tracing some path, it nicely maps to a smooth, continuous trajectory of population activity along this torus. If you look at the firing pattern of a single individual grid cell, which, remember, on the plane the firing fields were arranged in a regular periodic hexagonal grid, it would be localized on a single patch of this torus. Consequently, a different grid cell from the same module corresponds to a different patch. Information one module gives, basically one grid coordinate, is the position along the torus. This means that the brain uses these toroidal coordinates to map the position in space. It's fascinating because in the outside world, there are hardly any tori. We mostly deal with straight lines, planes and sometimes circles. So why would evolution choose a torus for this purpose? I mean, I can see the rationale for the case of police officers, but all the rest? What's even more fascinating is that this torus is invariant to exact environment and even the brain state. Taking an individual grid cell and looking at its activity in different environments, which by the way looks totally different to our eyes, in fact, corresponds to the same patch of this population activity torus. The network activity is localized on the same torus even when the animal is sleeping. All of this demonstrates that this toroidal structure emerges independently of incoming sensory information. It is intrinsic to the network, arising from specific connectivity of neurons and the weight of synapses between them. This concept is known in theoretical neuroscience as continuous attractor network, when connectivity restricts underlying dynamics, causing it to be localized only to a subset of all possible states. It still remains to be resolved how exactly such a structure arises from the network architecture and whether there are any other low-dimensional attractor states like this in circuits that are relating to higher-order functions, such as language processing or consciousness. But just the fact that we can gain some insight into how the brain works by uncovering a simple, elegant, geometric structure hidden behind a network activity which seems chaotic and noisy is completely astonishing. If you liked the video, share it with your friends, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and press the like button. Stay tuned for more interesting stuff coming up. Until then, goodbye and thanks for the interesting knowledge.